Hi there, I'm Black. <coughs> I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel. Um, first time passing through, subscribe, like, and share. And I do all kinds of different videos. Now, this is a hair video, and you might say, "What the bloody hell is she talking about hair for?" And she wears wigs. What can she talk about? What can she tell me? Well, you might think I can't tell you nothing. In which case, why are you watching the video? Anyway, I'm coming from a different angle, to be honest. Um, a friend of mine came over to me today and she said, um, oh, you do videos, she said. Um, why don't you do videos for black British women? Because the um, atmosphere, the weather, and what was the third thing she said? The weather, the atmosphere. She said, anyway, it interferes with our hair and it stops it from growing and... You know, there's nobody, there's no British black people out there talking about our hair. And I said to her, to be honest, hair is different for each person. One size doesn't fit all. So there is no one person who can talk about hair that's going to benefit everyone. Because depending on your genetics, depending on your texture, depending on whether you're mixed, your hair's going to be totally different. But what I, when she was talking to me, what I started wondering is why are we so preoccupied with our hair? What is it? Is it, she said it stems from the Bible where it says a woman's beauty is her hair. But there again, even if a woman's beauty is her hair, what is the definition of beauty? What is the definition of beautiful hair? For me, the definition of beautiful hair is healthy hair. Hair that looks healthy and shiny. And I don't mean pressed shiny. I mean, you know, that little, that sheen it has. Now, I read somewhere that all our hair needs, all black hair needs, is water. Spring water or mineral water. You just dab it whenever you want, when it feels a bit dry. And if you want to put a little bit of coconut oil in or olive oil, you can. But a bottle of olive oil, a large bottle of olive oil, you can get it for like, I think 2 59 or the maximum is £5 and it lasts you for ages. Or coconut oil, that can be relatively cheap. So if, the, if all we need is water, why are we spending all this money on all these different products just because you've got people on YouTube and in magazines saying, oh, you can have hair like mine. Look at my hair. Some of them have on weaving. Some of them have on those good, good weaves. You know, the um, lace front, you would not know. I mean, some of those wigs look phenomenal. You would never know. You've see, you see them on Facebook. You see them coming up on all the ads. You would never know that they're not wigs. Some of them have that on their head and talking about, oh, I use this product. So I, what my point is, is that why are we preoccupied with hair? Why do we have to feel as though we have to justify how we wear our hair, what we put on our heads? That is what I would like to know. Who told us that our natural hair needs all of this stuff that that the production people or the the um, shop owners or keepers make billions from. Who told us how hair was substandard, so it needed all of these products? You don't see anybody else spending spending all of this money on products. This woman, she told me she spent, what, 15 quid on a little conditioner and she said it didn't even work. Because it's, it's a load of hype. And it's to distract you from, you know, um, what they call it, simple, keep it simple. It's to distract us from keeping a simple remedy with our hair. Now, we grew up with our parents, I'm sure every woman had to, heard her mother say, you have to take care of your hair, you have to take care of it, you have to do this, you know, and all of this, all of this rubbish. 
you know, as if our hair was always hard work. We have been conditioned to believe our hair is hard work. Our hair is just a garden. That's what our hair is. Our hair, we should treat our hair like it's a garden. The only thing with gardens is that some people have green fingers and some people don't. Sometimes you have to bring in a professional gardener and they will help nurture your garden. So think of your hair as a garden. All it needs is some rainwater. I mean, the air is polluted, so the rainwater isn't even all that great at the moment. But if you can't go back to the West Indies and have that beautiful rainwater and sea water and soft water, and we have to deal with this hard water, do use the equivalent. Get mineral water or spring water and keep a bottle of that. And you just put it in one of those spray bottles, you know, those travel bottles, and you just spray your hair every now and then to keep it moist. What's wrong with that? But that doesn't make money, does it? We can't have that. How are we going to make money if all these black people, all these black women that we've been making billions of just decide to use water for their hair? All of a sudden, they realise the secret to their hair is just simply water. And the thing is, with all our different textures, that there is no one size fit all. So you do get people on these YouTube channels with naturally um, beautiful hair, whether it's because, like I said, of genetics or whether it's because they're mixed. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get the same thing. And people spend and spend and spend just trying to get their hair like that. Me, I can't be asked. I ain't got time to be spending hours and hours. My daughter, she had short, well, the front of her hair, she used to use, you remember when they had, um, they weren't lace fronts at the time, but they had these wigs and they used to glue them on and it peeled off the front of her hair. And would you believe that she made some concoction of natural oils, but she had a regimen and night and day, night and me personally, I couldn't do it, but it made her hair all grow back. She have hair down to here now. So it is possible to um, do stuff with your hair. But I mean, it takes dedication and hours. And like I said, if you want a beautiful garden, you have to spend hours on it. But you can also keep it simple if you just want a simple, if your hair is, if you don't want any of these elaborate hairstyles then. So anyway, I just thought I would put a two pence worth in there. I'm probably talking a load of tosh and you'll probably tell me, oh, you're talking a load of rubbish. But um, I don't think we should be made to feel like our hair is inferior. And that's what was beautiful about that um, the lady from South Africa, Funke who won it with um, her natural hair and they were telling her, oh, aren't you going to wear a wig? Aren't you going to wear a weave? Like they know about weave and wig. And have you seen this big hype? I know you don't watch Love Island, but they're saying, oh, people are out of touch with the, with black people and wigs. Just because the guy said, oh, is she wearing a wig? I mean, they think they're so hip. I know that's a really old fashioned word, but bloody hell. Um, what else did I put here? She, I wanted to see what else she said. Yeah, how can we, e yeah. I was thinking about how can we emulate the climate that our hair was meant to grow best in, which is a hot climate. So maybe steaming is beneficial. It'd be interesting to know if somebody just used water and a little bit of olive oil and steamed their hair every once in a while, whether it would grow. I mean, I would do it for you, but I just ain't got the time, to be honest. Is there any, is there any volunteers out there who might want to try a simple way that will work for everybody? Because at the moment, one size doesn't fit all. And, you know, and that's what I was trying to say to her. You know, I could say something about my hair. But it doesn't mean it's going to work for her hair. And she, you know, she was really saying, she goes, well, she said, it's, I was saying to her, I don't think it is just about hair anyway. I think it goes deeper than that. 
So she was saying, well, it's not about, it is about hair, but it's also about people, get women getting together and talking about hair. I don't think it's that either. I don't think it's this community spirit about hair. I think we've been conditioned on a subliminal level to believe that our hair is inferior and it needs to look a certain way to be beautiful. That's what I believe. Because I know that even in my house, if I'm in my house and I haven't got my wig on, sometimes I put my wig on a bloody peg, you know, and somebody knocks on my door, could be just the postman, and my hair don't look, I've got that in, inner thing that says, my hair doesn't look good because it's not growing evenly. And I get, you know, I personally feel uncomfortable about my hair because it doesn't grow evenly. And people could tell me, oh, you look beautiful with the, your bald head till the cows come home. They go, oh, you look lovely with short hair, like what people say. Because sometimes I just clean it off, especially in the summer. And sometimes I bleach it. And yeah, I, do, I like it sometimes, but it doesn't get away from the fact how I would love my hair to look ideally and what what is that what is that in my head on that subliminal level that says my hair isn't beautiful if it's not a certain length and it doesn't look a certain way because that's what I tell myself even though sometimes on a good day I will look at my hair when I'm natural and when it's bleached and when I've shaved the sides off and it looks, you know, I've tapered it up a bit. And I say, yeah, man, you look good. But without the shaping, why can't it look good without the shaping and without the colouring and just when it grows natural? But you look at, your, you, well, I look at myself and a lot of people look at themselves. If it hasn't been styled and it hasn't been shaped and it hasn't been braided and it hasn't been tailored and you haven't worked at it to make it look a certain way, it's not good enough. So that has to be something in the psyche. Maybe it's just me. Maybe, you know, I grew up, you know, and my mother was always criticising my hair and telling me how nappy and picky and all that kind of stuff. And then my first husband, he was the same, you know, because he met me with a wig. <laughs> he met me with a wig and he thought the wig was my hair. <laughs> oh, when, he take, when I took off the wig after, you know, I used to sleep in the wig, you know. <laughs> when I took off the wig one day, he said, yeah, I'm going to be so picky and yeah. <laughs> we take off a picky and girl. I'm like, yeah, right. So that wasn't very good for my self-esteem. But my point is, is that, you know, we grow up with how we look and, you know, the way we've been taught how we look and how our hair is when you're young. And I think that, you know, I think people underestimate how indoctrinated we can be when we are young, when we're children. What our parents tell us, what people around us tell us about ourselves and we, I, we haven't got the agility or we don't have the mental capacity to back it off and reject it and say it's not true. And you get these adults who are supposed to be authorities telling you what you look like, how you look. I mean, I was, my mum always used to say to me, oh, you're always looking, you're always trying to draw attention to yourself. I never was trying to draw attention to myself just because I have a different sense of style. It doesn't mean I'm drawing attention to myself, but my mum is very reserved and she, she conforms. So for her, because I was a bit, I wouldn't say outrageous, but, you know, I was different. She would say that. But what I'm saying is, I even now I remember that voice in my head. And so we grow up with people telling us who we are, what we are, how, you know, what's wrong with us. And then as you grow up, you don't realise how it impacts you and it impacts you on a very, very deep level. And then we have all this socialisation going on and we have, every, you know, the TV and then you have all these images and you have black girls with beautiful natural hair with big puffs and big afros and you have black girls. I mean, I went to church on Sunday and, you know, they there's this black, black girls with beautiful straight hair and ponytails and I'm looking at them and saying boy how do they get their hair like that you know 
And I find myself bloody looking at people's hair when I'm supposed to be concentrating on the word of God. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, I just go in there for a little bit of peace. You know what I mean? But the, my point is, is that it's, it's deep. And I don't think it's just about our hair. I really don't. I think it's much deeper than that. And like I said, it's not for everyone. And I think young people, for some reason, they don't have, they don't seem to have nappy, funny hair. They don't seem to have this funny hair. I won't even say nappy hair, but they, they, these, when I'm looking at young girls, they seem to have beautiful hair, all of them. I don't think I've seen one young girl with horrible hair. Well, I shouldn't say horrible hair, but you know what I mean. And it's down their bloody shoulders. And it's not like they they were mixed because that church I went to was an African church. And so, you know, and they weren't, they weren't light, they were dark with long hair and straight hair and just look at them. I spent my whole bloody, <laughs> my whole bloody time in church looking in people's head and making my own little personal judgments on it and thinking, bloody hell, I wonder what she uses on her hair. I wonder if I should ask her to use what she uses and stuff. But anyway, all I'm saying is that when you're looking at different people's hair, you can't say it's the weather, like what my what this lady was saying. You can't say it's anything in particular. I think it's an individual thing, and I think some people know how what their hair texture is and how best to treat it, and some people don't. Some people need a gardener. Some people just shouldn't be putting their own hands in their head. I know that if um, my daughter not not the one who did the experiment, but I know my other daughter, she's definitely got green fingers with hair. Any hair she any head she touches, it will grow, but she ain't got time to put her hand in my head. That's the problem. So anyway, <clears throat> I've said enough and that's all I'm gonna say. Bye.